and welcome back to the photo editor. In this episode, I'm going to be editing a picture of a bicycle traveling along a pier in Mornington when I was there on holiday a while back. So we're going to have a bit of fun working with the ocean and the big sky and the clouds, as well as the texture of the pier and the dramatic shadows that we see along the picture plane. As always, if you like watching these programs, please hit the thumbs up button. They help views get generated. Also, tap the subscribe and the bell notification button so you can hear about when future content appears. And now let's get editing. And welcome back to the photo editor. Today I am doing one of those classic subjects, a day at the beach. So I've got a few options to choose from, and I may well actually go for a few different um, options over time. But I'm particularly interested in this one here, where we have a cyclist coming uh, quite quickly towards us. Uh, unfortunately, this arm got on the way here, but I can crop that out. Although it's not a practice I recommend relying on... Um, uh, to become slack in your composition planning. And I quite like it because the cyclist really occupies the center. And it almost reminds me of that famous picture by um, Henri Cartier-Bresson, uh, where there's a bicycle riding in front of the courtyard of an apartment building, and we see a spiraling staircase, and the cyclist uh, comes in at just the right moment so that uh, the form of the picture really uh, uh, accentuates um, the line of sight towards the, the, the center focus, the bicycle. And it's a, a well-known classic image amongst a lot of photo connoisseurs. So I'm going to do that one. Uh, for another episode, we have this uh, closer up of a I don't think it was the same cyc same cyclist, uh, but um, uh, made a snap decision. My camera was a bit uh, lower exposed at the time, but uh, as we've often seen in the past, it's good to be a bit underexposed when uh, doing some edits. Although um, that's usually without the sky being so bright, and that might even not be an opportunity to do another. Um, Experiment in color, like doing a Technicolor type of edit, as we've done in a previous episode. But let's move on to this one. Yeah, so we actually, for once, have uh, quite a lot of what was blue sky with clouds in front, and that's a one where red has typically worked well in many situations. Because I, whereas that's interesting, actually, um, the other filters have. nowhere near as significant an effect. So that's quite interesting. Um, the blue, that does seem to keep the sky alight while the foreground figure is really dark, but I like it under the red filter. There's a bit of detail coming out. I want to have a bit of balance content, uh, so don't want it too dark. And it's a, like a pleasant uh, s subject, so we don't need it to be really contrast, although it can be fun to uh, sort of cast film against type.
Well, that is interesting. The Codec 400 Team Exit. Like I know we said before that we didn't want the details to be completely blocked out on the person, but now that we have that really crisp um, outline, it it actually looks pretty interesting. Yeah, so going down in... I don't want to go too high in the ISO because it'll look too grainy. And I still want the richness, richness of the timber. I love timber texture. So, all right, I think I'm actually going to go with the BW400CN Pro. So the figure's quite dark, we're, and we still get quite light timber. And I'm just going to test the filters again. Yeah, so the blue makes it even, um, filter makes it even more prominent, but I kind of like that we have the really contrasty sky so if I want to I could probably try just making the figure darker manually right, so we'll save that Okay, so to begin with, we will crop out that arm. And all that really does is put the cyclist more in focus. Okay, I think... I actually started to like how you get it as a really dark outline, so I'm actually going to try getting up close and blacking out some of the features. It's going to be kind of critical that I get the brush just the right size. That should do. So we'll begin with the head. To take the blacks right down. It looks a little splodgy up close like this, but it shouldn't um, be so bad when we take it, zoom out a bit. Uh, kind of like a bit of light coming on the sh on the arm here. Uh, the middle of the body is pretty good. I'll just try and take out this bit of line here. Black out the handlebar. Although this is a photograph and we're recording something that's happened in front of us, when we're creating presentable images like this, we're, as much as any artist with a, a brush and paint, are we're formulating a vision for the somebody to look at. So we don't have to be a complete slave to exactly what happened in front of us so long as it blends in properly with what the brain expects uh, what a something natural is yeah so that's pretty much as we wanted it so we have the pretty clear silhouette with just a bit of light coming on which i like now i'm going to go ahead and start editing the timber there's I love uh, old timber docks. There's so much, although this 
one's not too old by the looks of it, but I do love all the different textures of the wood and symptomatic of um, somebody being stuck in Victorian Melbourne where you're still not allowed to go anywhere and increasing my variety of unusual hobbies even more. I've actually started getting into wood carving and whittling lately and that has given me all the more an appreciation for the texture of wood. Okay, so that's becoming very grainy very quickly. Partially probably because we're using a 400 ISO film, which is just a little bit... Uh, a little bit higher grain than normally. I usually like to keep it at 100. And when you're editing like this, um, those subtle choices make a difference. That's why I just need to throttle back a bit on those two fil on those two edits. And I have a feeling also that this corner of the pier might have been just a little bit less exposed, maybe just because of the cyclist that was blocking out the light from the sun. And because you can tell that it's a lot more in focus here. So we'll create a new brush and see if we can go a bit more hardcore with the texture and clarity there. Yeah, that's still a bit of grain coming out, but it's working a lot better. Oh, and all the sort of checkered board nature of the shadow uh, coming out on the pier, it actually like really guides the eye down. So do we want to add highlight to that? Yeah, um, adds just a little bit of a gleam. So in this corner here, I'll add some highlight too, and we'll see what happens. That's pretty good. Now we can um, try adding a bit more clarity just to balance it out with the rest of the pier. Now we're starting to get a... going to look at the shadow from the bicycle here. So an obvious one will be to try and increase the shadow effect too bright what I might actually do is zoom in again and really um, do that kind of micro edit again. It's about the right size. Yeah. And I might come around the edge and with the opposite, opposite the more neutral shadow. Coming on the head a bit more. And 
don't want to take it too far. I don't want it to be unnatural. interesting this shirt is almost sort of broken into two parts the much sharper section nearer to the bicycle directly from the when the lights coming and where it sort of becomes a bit more blurry so I'll let you create us an edit within the shadow within the upper half of the shadow Yeah, so I might just brighten down here a bit just because it's starting to look a bit too much like there's like this dark, sinister corner of the picture. Yeah, it's a bit more balanced now. Uh, where I blackened is just a little too black in that major part, so just reduce the contrast down and so it doesn't stand out so much. Yeah, it's a bit better. Okay, let's now do think the ocean Yeah, so it's uh, quite um sharp and jagged looking. the sky I'll try and up the contrast I don't want to do too much because we're at a higher ISO and so the grain shows up a lot more Actually, not that being that effective. Maybe I, if I increase sh oh, shadow instead. Yeah, increasing the black a bit more helps. Might have to do micro edits on the shadow to make them pop a little more. Skies can be interesting because they're sort of this great vast expanse with just slight coolings and warmings of temperature, and you can notice the difference in how you have to approach it with your um, brush tool.
because I kind of want it to look like the light is almost coming more directly along the line of the pier. So I'll see if I can darken this lighter plane on the sky just a bit more. just enough to take the edge off. Now by crossing over we have lost a tiny bit of that those little highlights that were along the cyclist um, person but I, I can work with that. Notice that before there's like a tiny, must have been a small boat or something. This very tiny speck. Well, let's work on the sh on the clouds now. Yeah, so the contrast the changes aren't that radical. What happens if I add clarity? So the clarity doesn't do as much, but the texture adds a bit. I guess well, we'll just settle with um, adding just that bit of brightness just to make the clouds pop that little bit more. I'll take away that one where it's just a streak. It's um, it's kind of it's created a bit of a little blur mess instead of what I wanted. Yeah, a little bit noticeable, more noticeable on this larger clown. So I'm going to try along this railing adding just a bit of higher light but because we had that really high exposed uh, water behind it it might not work. So we'll try upping the highlights like I normally do with metal railings. Yeah, it's not too bad, sort of. Because it's almost overexposed already. The water. I guess the uh, limitations of editing an overexposed section in this t on this occasion work to our advantage. A bit of a safeguard. Now we've got a bit of the shadow coming in on the rails. Along here I might uh, try and... Um, up the intensity of the shadow there.
up in the hearts a bit too without creating a streak on the edge of the pier. Okay, I'm basically happy with that. I'm gonna now add some highlight to uh, the bits of metal bracing here. Get a bit of clarity perhaps. I'm going to bring that further along the rail just so it blends in a bit. And actually to those rails I fixed before, I'll add a bit of clarity. Okay, clarity seems to be the only thing that does anything, texture not so much. Even clarity has its limits. All right, well, I think we're at the end of this particular image. So we've got a nice high contrast vision of the the bright sky with the cyclist in uh, their deep shadow uh, the and the shadow sort of trails beyond them forward uh, towards the foreground we have the quite the character texture of the timber and the rivets actually form a bit of a checkerboard pattern that guide us to the source of the light and back towards the main focus in the in the center of the of the field we do see a bit more grain in the sky but it's kind of okay here because it's in the sort of in the class of the old school over slightly overexposed image um, with a bit of extra grain and i actually don't mind it for this one so i hope you enjoy the program as always if you want to see more please hit the thumbs up button and tap subscribe as well as the bell notification and i'll look forward to talking with you again next time